Hey guys, I'm Mark. Today I'm going to show you how I make elk calls using some alumilite and some scrap wood to make hybrid turning blanks. Check it out. The first thing I had to do is trim off some pieces from this gnarly cutoff so that they just fit inside the mold. The first cut was a hair large, so I moved the fence and trimmed it again. There, perfect. The enemy of casting resin is moisture, so I put the chunks of wood in an oven for several hours to make sure that they are as dry as possible. If you try to cast these blanks with wet wood, the resin just won't stick to it. The Alumilite clear casting resin is mixed one to one by weight, so I carefully pour out equal parts A and B into a clear cup on a kitchen scale. The clear cup is nice because it allows you to see your mixing process. I stir the two parts together, making sure to scrape the sides until the mixture is completely clear. Then the fun part starts. There are tons of different colored dyes and metallic powders to choose from, so I picked a few and mixed them into the resin. In this case, I'm using the Alumilite Slow Resin, which has a 12 minute working time, so I had plenty of time to work with such a small batch. If you use the regular Alumilite, that working time is cut down to seven minutes, but I find that I typically cast one of these call blanks in five minutes or less, so there's still plenty of time. I found out the hard way that it is really important to use a good mold release. For my first few attempts, I used an ancient can that had been sitting on my shelf for years, and that ended badly. I pulled the blocks of wood out of the oven about 10 minutes before getting started so they could cool down to room temperature. I dropped the blocks in the mold, then slowly poured the resin over the top. In the case of this two color pour, I gently swirl the colors together, but not so much that they just get mixed into one color. I found that the blocks of wood tend to float to the top, so to keep that from happening, I just use one of my stir sticks as a wedge and press it in between the wood and the side of the mold. Then I just put the mold in a pressure pot and waited for the resin to harden. The slow resin can be removed from the mold in two to four hours. The regular kind only takes 45 to 90 minutes. The reason for using the pressure pot is to avoid getting bubbles in the blank. You might think that a vacuum chamber would be the way to do this, but Illuminolite hardens too fast, so you wouldn't be able to get the bubbles out in time. By using a pressure pot, the bubbles are technically still there, but they are compressed down so small that you can't see them. It only takes 30 PSI to pull this off, but my pot is rated to 60 PSI, so I pressurize mine to about 50. Even though the demold time was only two to four hours, I tend to let my blanks sit overnight. The next day, I release the pressure, remove the lid, and pull out the mold. Then I disassemble my mold, usually just the bottom and the side, and knock out the blank. I use my bandsaw again to square up the blanks. I set the fence to the width of the blank, then trim off the excess. Next, I need to drill a hole through the blank, so I square off one end, then I make a little indentation to help the drill bit find center. I drill a 5 8 inch hole up to a predetermined depth, then switch to a smaller drill bit to go all the way through. I'll explain why I do this in a minute. To save some time with the roughing gouge, and to reduce the risk of chipping and tear out, I cut the corners off the blank at the bandsaw. Next, I mounted the blank on the mandrel, letting the small end stick out through the small hole. This definitely complicates the process a little bit, but I found that with a 5 8 inch hole all the way through, the call was just too loud. This way, the airflow is restricted and the sound is much better. I used a roughing gouge to turn the blank round and down to its final diameter. 
The ribbons that come off of a resin blank like this one are pretty mesmerizing. So here for your viewing pleasure, please enjoy some gratuitous slow-mo. I have a rough template of the shape that I like, and I use it to mark out the high and low spots in the call. Then, I just turn it until the call comes out. Here's a quick look at the turning part of the process from start to finish. The sanding process for a resin blank starts out the same as any other material. Starting with a low grit, I sanded the call and progressed up through 1500, making sure to sand lengthwise between grits. This is where the sanding process gets a little different. After the regular sandpaper, I wet sanded the calls using these polishing pads starting at 1500 and going all the way through 20,000. So I just wanted to give you a quick little sample of how big of a difference that extra polishing makes. Now they both went through the regular sanding process starting at 320 grit up through 1500 grit. The blue one on your right stopped there. The green one on the left went up through 20,000 grit on that foam mesh sanding pad. And you can see a pretty big difference. The one, the green one is a lot shinier and it just looks a little smoother. The, the blue one, even though it is very, very smooth to the touch, uh, just isn't as shiny. It's just a little bit duller. Um, and you can almost even make out some of those scratches in it. So it takes a lot more work and a lot more time to go through that extra polishing, uh, sanding stuff. But the benefits are definitely worth it. This is the mouthpiece I like to use. There are lots of different options, but I just like the way this one sounds. They do come with some sharp edges that don't feel too great on your lips, so I round the edges over using 220 grit paper, then I make it smooth with 400. They are easy to put together. Just put the reed in place on the tone board, then put the small half on top. I roll one of these green rubber bands onto the end to hold the two halves together, then pop it up onto the lanyard groove. This way, the whole mouthpiece stays together as one piece. Then I put one of the green bands onto the tone board over the reed. You can adjust the position of this to change the pitch of the call. These little green guys are actually castration bands that you can find at any farm and ranch type store. Now I always like to check the fit of the mouthpiece to the barrel right away because there seems to be some inconsistency in the sizing between some of this stuff. I use a 5 8 drill bit, I use a 5 8 mandrel, this is supposed to be a 5 8 inch um, plug that goes in. And in this one it actually fits well enough, but more often than not, it seems like they just sort of slop in. So that one, that one doesn't hold well enough. So you could just take a piece of tape and wrap it around there and essentially shim it up so that it fits in there a little bit better. But I don't really like that. It doesn't, it doesn't look very professional. It seems a little cheap to me. So I've got another way that I like a lot better. I put a very small bead of CA glue all the way around the inside of the call, then spread it out with a matchstick. It doesn't take much. Think about the thickness of that piece of tape. Then I hit it with activator and it's ready to go. The last step is to apply a finish. 
These calls will be used outside, potentially in the rain and snow, so I used an exterior polyurethane. I found that the finish has no problem sticking to the Illumilite, but unfortunately it does bead up ever so slightly, and it ruins the glass smooth finish we just got with those polishing pads. The best case scenario for these calls would be to stabilize the wood before casting it with the resin. That way, all of the materials would be waterproof before you even got started, and therefore there would be no need for a finish. One of these days I'll get myself set up to do some wood stabilizing, and then I'll revisit this video. Well, I've really been enjoying this Illumilite stuff lately. I've made a whole bunch of elk calls, I've made a handful of bottle stoppers, and just a couple of pens, but I've got some plans for some other really interesting stuff coming down the road. Thanks for checking it out, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.